Every once in a while, you come across a person in history who's in a league of their own. A person whose life reads almost like an adventure novel. Someone who isn't just good at one thing, they're exceptional at four, five, or six different things. Let me introduce you to one of these remarkable people. He was a star athlete, a war hero, and a musical genius. His name was Joseph Boulogne Chevalier de Saint George. Though he would rise to exceptional fame, Joseph had to break many barriers to get there. He was born around 1745 on the Caribbean island of Guadalupe and moved to France when he was a boy. His father was a white plantation owner, and his mother, Nanon, was an enslaved African woman. Because of the darker color of Joseph's skin, the odds were stacked against him. The laws in 18th century France discriminated against people of color, but Joseph's father was able to get his son into some of the best schools in the country. Joseph studied with the top of French society, taking lessons in fencing and music. As an adult, he dueled against the greatest swordsman in Europe, lived with the famous composer Mozart, played violin for the queen, and even led troops into battle during the French Revolution. He would become one of the most famous composers in France. During his time, and even today, he is often known as Black Mozart. But the truth is, Joseph Boulogne was unlike Mozart or anyone else in history. He was entirely unique. This is the story of Joseph Boulogne Chevalier de Saint George, the revolutionary composer. Hi, young historians. Welcome to another episode of Anytime Now. I'm Brooke, co-founder of Honest History. Most of you have probably heard of Mozart, the famous composer during the classical period. But you probably haven't heard about the person in this episode. If you were a friend of the French queens in the 1700s, you would have seen Joseph Boulogne play private concerts during her parties at the Royal Palace. His skill as a violinist became widely known in France and Europe. But it wasn't just the violin that he excelled at. Stories about his other exploits and talents turned into legends that at some point were mostly lost to history. But now we're going to uncover this incredible story once again and travel back in time to learn more about his life. Our story begins in the 1760s in the French city of Rouen. Joseph Boulogne held his sword by his side and looked out at the crowd in front of him. People were slowly filling up the room. They had come to watch his fencing duel. Fencing is a type of sport that involves sword fighting. Joseph was still a fencing student, but many believed he was already unbeatable. And that day, he was about to duel Alexander Picard, the best swordsman of his time. This wasn't your normal, everyday fencing match. The stakes and people's emotions were running very high that day. Why? Alexander Picard had challenged Joseph to a duel to prove who was the best fencer. But Picard had said something else that made this match even more important. He had made fun of Joseph's darker skin color. And now, everyone was talking about this duel. Slavery was practiced in France's colonies at this time, and many people of color, like Joseph's mother, were enslaved. In the crowd, there were people who supported slavery, and there were also people who wanted to end it. This wasn't just a duel to prove Joseph's fencing skills. For many in the crowd, this was a duel about racism and slavery. The spectators chatted with each other as they gathered in the room. Many of them were placing bets. Who would win? Would it be Joseph Boulogne, a young fencing student, or Alexander Picard, a master swordsman of France? The crowd cheered as the two men stepped onto the floor. Joseph faced Picard, holding the sword out in front of him. Joseph was always a gentleman, polite, generous, and calm. He was never one to jump to anger. But if pushed, you could make him very annoyed. This wasn't the first time an opponent had said something unkind about his skin color, and each opponent that had regretted it. Joseph was fast, precise, and fearsome. Picard pointed his blade at Joseph and lunged forward, but Joseph dodged the blow. The two men's swords clanged against each other as they took swipe after swipe. Then Joseph saw his window, 
He thrust his sword forward and tapped the card. Ha! Joseph shouted and smiled. It soon became clear Picard was outmatched. The crowd roared in excitement. No one could deny it any longer. Joseph Ballone was the best swordsman in the Kingdom of France. Joseph left Rouen that day a champion and headed back home to Paris. Traveling through the cobbled streets, he could hear the trot of horses and the shouts of street vendors. His carriage pulled up to his apartment, located on the Grand Rue de Bac. Servants greeted Joseph as he walked through the door of his home. As always, it was a bit of a mess. There were empty glasses, perfume bottles, a pair of ice skates, some swords, and many bundles of sheet music. Joseph was a busy man and didn't spend much time in his apartment. In fact, he was usually only there for two things, to sleep and practice his music. Joseph untied his cravat and walked over to his violin. It was a gift from his father. He tucked the instrument under his chin. Taking the bow in his hand, Joseph began to play, and he played beautifully. Historians still don't know much about Joseph's early training in music, but we know it must have taken many years for Joseph to become such a skilled violinist. He likely began playing when he was just a little boy. Soon after Joseph's duel with Picard, Joseph graduated from the school and worked for the King of France. He became an officer to the King's bodyguard. At this point, he took his father's illustrious last name, Xavier de Saint George. From this moment on, Many would know him by this name. Joseph, or St. George as he was now called, moved in the highest circles of society, typically wearing a white satin vest, velvet breeches, and shoes with a scarlet heel. He knew how to dress to impress. He was admired by many for his charm, gentle manner, and many talents, including fencing, riding, swimming, skating, running, and dancing. He could often be seen swimming across the Seine with only one arm. And in skating, his skill exceeded everyone else's, one friend remembered. As to the pistol, he rarely missed the target. Playing the violin was just another one of Joseph's many talents. He would often play at parties for friends and wealthy families in Paris. Joseph's skills caught the attention of a famous composer named Gozek. The composer even dedicated music to Joseph. Monsoir, in view of the reputation you've acquired through your talents and the support you have accorded to artists, I allow myself the liberty of dedicating this work to you, Gozek wrote. The composer later took Joseph under his wing and made him the first violin and timekeeper for the Concert des Amateurs. This was a company of talented musicians in Paris. As a timekeeper, Joseph would stand with his baton, guiding the musicians and making sure they played together. It was the second most important job in the orchestra. Joseph was a perfectionist and wanted to prove his talents. He decided he didn't want to simply play music. He wanted to write it. He started by writing music called string quartets that were played by three or four string instruments. But Joseph dreamed big. He soon began writing music for an entire orchestra. This was music that would be played by at least 76 instruments. In 1772, his new music was finally ready, so he planned a performance. Dozens of people gathered inside a grand mansion in Paris called the Hotel des Soubises. The musicians began tuning their instruments as they waited for the audience to quiet down. Then, the orchestra began playing Joseph's first concerto. Joseph stood out in front, playing the violin with the rest of the orchestra. The audience was in awe and burst out into applause at the end of the performance. Hi, young historians. Time for a quick break from this amazing story to tell you a bit more about Honest History. If you're enjoying this episode, then you'll love Honest History's magazines and books. Each one is filled with important adventures through the past, like the story of Chang Yi Sao, 
a Chinese woman who commanded one of the largest pirate fleets in history, to Mansa Musa from Africa, one of the wealthiest people to ever live. You can pick up a copy or subscribe and receive three issues delivered straight to your doorstep every three months. Just go to honesthistory.co and use code anytime now for a 10% discount. That's honesthistory.co and special promo code anytime now. Okay, let's get back to the story. News quickly spread throughout Paris. Joseph Boulogne Xavier de Saint George may be the greatest musician of the age. Joseph would go on to write many more musical pieces, including quartets, concertos, and operas. He became the conductor of the Concert des Amateurs, making it one of the finest orchestras in Paris, and perhaps even Europe. But life was not always easy for the famous Xavier de Saint George. As one of the most talented musicians of his time, he was in line to become the conductor of the Paris Opera. But three of the leading opera singers objected. They wrote to the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, saying they would never take orders from Joseph. And the reason? It was because of his skin color. Joseph often faced prejudice during his life. This time, he was denied one of the best jobs he could get as a musician. The Queen, Marie Antoinette, decided not to organize musical performances at the opera anymore. Instead, she held them at the Royal Palace of Versailles. She invited her closest friends and a few musicians. Joseph was often asked to play for the Queen at these private concerts. Joseph would later find a job with a private theater and move into a grand mansion in Paris. And for a short time, another famous musician would be living in the same mansion. His name was Mozart. I'm guessing you, your parents, or your teachers may have heard of him. Today, historians can only imagine the conversations these composers had and the ideas they shared with each other. Joseph continued to compose to music, but he had not forgotten his other great talent, fencing. Still a skilled swordsman, Joseph often traveled to London, England to compete in matches. By now, he was over 40 years old, and his skills were still sharp as ever. One night, while Joseph was walking to a concert in London, he heard footsteps. He turned and saw a man pointing a pistol at him. Oi, give me your purse, the man shouted. Little did the man know, he had just challenged one of the greatest swordsmen in Europe. Using his walking stick, Joseph quickly knocked the pistol out of the man's hands. Suddenly, more men jumped out from the shadows and ran towards Joseph. With his stick ready, Joseph defended himself. It wasn't long before all the men were on the ground. Joseph brushed off his coat and continued walking to the concert. He was scheduled to play the violin that evening, and he wasn't going to miss it. The story of what happened that night quickly made Joseph a legend throughout London. He also became involved with the abolitionist movement while he visited the city. This movement was working to end slavery in the British Empire. During the day, Joseph competed in fencing competitions, and at night, he played the violin for his new English friends. He even fenced and dined with the future king of England. But when Joseph returned to France, he felt a change in the air. Many people in France were unhappy with the king and queen. They wanted a new type of government where the people ruled the nation, not a king. France's ruling class was in trouble. The country was headed towards a violent revolution. Although Joseph had many rich and powerful friends, he supported the revolution. The revolution promoted the ideas of equality and liberty. Joseph dreamed of a France where he would be given equal rights to those of his white friends and family members. As a person of color, he was denied inheritance when his father died. He was also not allowed to marry the woman he loved. When the call came to join the Revolutionary Army, Joseph was one of the first to sign up. A skilled fighter and a horse rider, he proved to be an incredible soldier. He was put in charge of his own regiment, where he trained his troops with the same dedication and precision that he trained the musicians of his orchestra. Many of Joseph's soldiers were men of color. But the revolution soon turned against Joseph. 
soldiers showed up at his front door to arrest him. The leaders of the revolution wanted Joseph in prison. Joseph was confused. He fought for the revolution, not against it. What was his crime? It turned out he was being arrested because he knew many of the king's friends and family. They found this very suspicious. Local groups had begun arresting anyone they suspected supporting the king or queen. Thousands of prisoners were quickly sent to the guillotine, where they met their death. This period of the French Revolution is known as the Reign of Terror. Joseph was thrown in prison without a trial where he awaited his fate. I was arrested and later incarcerated for 18 months, Joseph wrote. Every morning, he woke up to listen to the names of those who would be sent to the guillotine, and every morning, he feared he'd hear his name. Thankfully, luck was on his side. The reign of terror ended just in time. After many months in prison, Joseph was released. The final years of Joseph's life were spent much more peacefully, with music. He continued to compose and became the director of a new orchestra. In 1799, after a life of adventure, the famous Xavier de Saint-Georges passed away in Paris. He was 53 years old. Joseph's story is impressive by any measure. He grew up during a time when people of color were not given equal rights in France. During his life, he was underestimated because of the color of his skin. He would break through barriers and become one of the most accomplished men of his time. He was a true gentleman, a leader, an artist, and a revolutionary. Throughout history, it's hard to find anyone else quite like the remarkable Joseph Boulogne Chevalier de Saint George. Welcome back. If you enjoy music, you're probably already looking up some of Joseph's songs. And if not, then I highly recommend checking out his violin concertos, which you can find streaming on most music platforms. It's amazing to imagine how he overcame so many obstacles to become a performer for the Queen. If we've learned anything on this show, it's that people are incredibly resilient and can overcome so many huge challenges to make their mark on history. If this is the first episode you're joining us for, I encourage you to go back and listen to some of our previous episodes for more inspiring stories from history. That's all for now. But if you want to learn more about people like Joseph, check out Honest History's books and magazines. You can learn about so many incredible people and events from the past. See you all next time. This episode was hosted by Curtis Cook and written by Heidi Coburn. Production was led by Randall Lawrence. To learn more about this episode, including more about the host, visit us at honesthistory.co and follow along for updates on social media at Honest History. When you think about history, are there lots of old guys wearing wigs and stockings? When you think about history, is Napoleon really short? And folks have wooden teeth. Do you know that history can be the most incredible, amazing stories for you and me? Sit back and listen to a story right now. It's honest, it's fun, and it's sure to. Ah!